ओके so good evening namaste everyone i'm very happy to welcome all of you to our great and grand event today of the mthr cxo forum this event is the first one of the year and what a way to begin the year the event is called lessons from the crisis to design the future and that's exactly what we need because now we are looking into the future the crisis is not over but at least much of it seems to be behind us but more important is that we have all of you logged in i want to thank each and every one no matter from where you are connected just like our speakers today we have a great round table over here all fantastic people around me very eminent far more established i am but so happy to have all of them let me also say that we are more than hr because i'm sure there are several of you who have logged in maybe even registered but perhaps this is your first event so this event is a more than hr cxo forum event we are called more than hr global i will share a little bit about us in just a bit but this event just wouldn't be possible without this experience which is virtual reality focused virtual reality based and this is made possible by a team called beyond reality events so applause to our partners we have more partners whom i'll come to in a while but beyond reality events all of them guramrita kanish kartik fantastic and wonderful for making this possible i want to first welcome all our round table conference panelists here i will first take the names i will introduce them after i will introduce more than hr and then i will give you a little bit of a context of what our event is going to be like so following are my panelists and i will also tell you from where they have uh logged in today it will be interesting for you to know so on my left is kayur my fellow mthr core member and kayur is from is is uh logging in from canada gyan from singapore after that is sunita from sweden vinay from india a uh, professor vasanti also from india akil also in india uh devi prasad das also in india rohit thakur also in india tanaya who is in india now also spends fair amount of time in a role at dubai then is suku from us anil also from mm -hmm. india and finally bhavesh on my right and bhavesh is logging in from africa more specifically from rwanda so we have this elite panel here let me tell you very briefly about more than hr i have lots to tell you for those who have joined for the first time and don't know anything about more than hr beyond having signed up for this event friends mthr global is the common name that we use for more than hr and mthr started off 18 years back we started off with just the idea to have fun we only said our fun should not be restricted to hr so more than hr and 
and in the same jocular manner we say the whole world is divided into two kinds of people you are either hr or you are more than hr so that's how more than hr began we started in a small way about 26 of us in a room which was one fourth the size of this room maybe one tenth the size of this room we were all crammed into a place but the energy and the spirit was so high we couldn't be contained in a room so over a period of 10 years from 2002 to 2012 we had grown to 10000 people across the globe but largely from india and in the next 5 years we grew to 15000 plus people and now all of us commonly say that we no longer count the number of people but we love to see how many people are engaged inspired enthused by all that we do because that's far more valuable to us my fellow co-founders and core team member are as follows uh two of them are not with me in the room but they are busy on social media and i'm sure you will see their comments so vipul agarwal my first core team member uh who also runs his organization called zend uh rajesh gupta and rajesh gupta is also called rg so that we can you know differentiate from me i am called rk in case uh, you don't know it already and then finally keyur who is our uh, we used to say our youngest member but keyur is no longer young <laughs> all right so let me go without any further delay to our fantastic panelists so keyur uh, my fellow team member uh keyur you need to correct me if i go wrong sorry about our core team members i keep least track of besides the fact they are my dear friends uh keyur works for uh royal canada bank uh gyan is a very popular author and a teacher something called as talent economics sunita does fantastic work in various areas one is in the change management area and she is a consultant with a with an organization called four rooms of change but sunita also does work in the social sector more particular in the domain of water and that's amazing to see and much of that work happens in india but also in parts of africa vinay is a very well established personal uh, director and uh, he's part of a group we all know as a uh, ma a navratna company a ma navratna company called coal india more specifically eastern coal field and he is the director personal hr over there and he represents the public sector uh, in this group professor vasanti whom i also call uh, didi very fondly she represents for us the education and research sector uh, probably among the best known names in hr uh, is a, a faculty in the indian institute of management at bangalore akil i'm sure is known to everyone who has been in hr for a few decades now is probably the most seasoned amongst us all followed by his neighbor whom i'll come to in just a minute so akil has been in multiple organizations is an ex chro himself i've known him for a few decades now and i can recollect his organization which i remember best as uh, ibm uh, and shell uh then of course uh, debi whom i also call as debi brother also a former chro with the rpg group worked with a clutch of organizations including uh, ciat and uh, mahindra british telecom phenomenal work and then rohit thakur rohit is the chro for a company which actually became very very well known over the last few years has been leading the digital revolution we know them as paytm Tanya leads globally the HR for an organization we know as SR, more specifically SR projects. Suku, also another guy I call as Suku brother, works for a company company called Trimble Incorporated, 
and he leads many things over there more specifically uh, people analytics hr analytics space and then uh, anil anil is an independent uh, consultant and also a principal with an organization called potential infinity but i know him more specifically and would like to introduce him for one who introduced mthr to danut sir very very active in the social uh, space the giving space and finally my most enthusiastic super energetic brother in another continent his name is bhavesh chandaria bhavesh is also the global ambassador for mthr because no matter where he goes whether he is in india whether he is in uh, jamnagar in india or whether he is in ethiopia or rwanda or in the us he speaks about mthr of his own volition bhavesh represents uh, the safal group and while he leads learning uh, over there but uh, he is also going to move into a business role very very soon yeah so friends that's been a little bit of a background and i want to welcome you all my dear friends most of all yes we are all professionals but i also want to welcome you and say thank you and all of you we'd love to hear a hello from each of you thank you thank you rajesh hi thank you rajesh hi hello hi, rajesh hi, fantastic introduction yeah it's great to be here thank you much thanks rajesh very nice to meet all of you you know what you set up here this is the first one for me yeah right. fantastic and to be here thanks for having yes. us and a special uh, thanks to almita and the rest of the team who organized it it was it was really it's it's fun thank you hello Hi. africa and rest of the world uh, i'm bhavesh from rwanda uh, very pleasure to have uh, to be here and hi colleagues thank you all right so all my colleagues in this room i want to tell you that there are at least a thousand people watching us on youtube all right and all the excitement is outside this room as well so we are going to you know really enjoy ourselves here while others are enjoying you know wherever they are and so we are going to have a great conversation here uh, not to forget that we have more partners uh, i will come to them later in uh, detail but for now it is just be it is sleeping owl it is a uh, a uh, brownie heaven it is a uh, uh, a better world and uh, it is a uh, brew india brew house i'm sorry and thank you all of you friends i would like to tell the world something very interesting to make this event even more meaningful because you know we are all here virtually we said that if we are talking about the future we must practice the future and therefore we are doing it in a virtual reality mode but virtual reality does not mean that we shouldn't be enjoying in the real world so to spice this up we got partners sleepy owl and brownie heaven to send some amazing goodies of coffee and brownies to all our panelists at their homes so that while they are here virtually in the real world they will also be enjoying coffee and brownies you will see their pictures later on social media so folks everyone around the room please enjoy your coffee and i hope you've got your brownie next to you i've got mine <laughs> wonderful so everyone are you ready to go i'm going to just give a quick low down on the flow now here is what we'll be doing uh we are right now at uh, 6:15 very quickly now we will be i'll request each of you to share your experiences and especially your two to three lessons from the crisis and we will go in the same order it can start with gyan keyur you may please add in 
uh, if there is something you would want to say after we are done with bhavesh please feel free to add on kevur is part of uh, you know my organizing and uh, moderating team uh, that's what we will do first and then we will take a short summary i will do i'll do a quick summary of whatever we uh, heard from them and then we'll take a short 5 minute break to grab our second cup of coffee we'll come back into part 2 which is designing the future and then we'll come to a uh, the question and answer after that so that's it uh, that's going to be the agenda so my question to all of you one by one requesting you to keep your uh, answers restricted to 4 minutes starting with gyan please share your lessons from the pandemic feel free to share an experience or two wherever relevant because it would be nice to know how that particular uh, lesson developed in your head how that idea came to your mind gyan over to you thank you uh, rajesh can you hear me i assume i'm coming through uh, very well so, yeah so uh, actually i'm i'm in bangkok uh at the moment having done two quarantines one in singapore and one in bangkok uh, because my office is here my family stays in singapore and i think um, the pandemic has been uh, uh, quite dramatic for me because uh, uh between march of 2020 and december of 2020 i didn't meet my family face to face we were in different cities uh so when something like that happens you know it sort of uh, wakes you up to to um, you know priorities uh, wakes you up to uh, you know what life's meaning really is in 2019 for context uh, because the tax people keep asking me in 2019 i took 72 international flights uh, in 2020 for march to, to the end of november i didn't take a single one so you know these are uh, you know life altering uh, Experiences, not just for me, but for everyone. You know, I have my own story, and I'm sure every single one of us has their own story. But I think uh, the pandemic is required. Uh, you know, a, a pause the pandemic uh, uh, gave us is required from time to time. I'm not saying the pandemic itself is required, but these shocks to the system are required uh, from time to time. Uh, I just hope that it could have happened without all the illness and death. Uh, but uh, the reality is i think uh, uh, three things that it taught me the first is that look we are social animals you know we are uh, just the nature of mankind and uh, uh, you know the the human condition requires us to be social and uh, we have found ways to connect uh, using technology using uh, you know variety of different media we are still keeping our social capital alive with the people that really matter uh, and i think that's the first outcome is to identify the people that really matter in your professional sphere and your personal sphere uh, and then ensure that distances don't come in the way time doesn't come in the way but we keep social capital uh, alive the second lesson is to focus on yourself uh, a lot and i used to let my my schedule sort of influenced me a lot more than my priorities uh but i think these last 9 uh, or 10 months have really focused uh, my energies on my physical state um you know i've lost a lot of weight i've become healthier uh my mental state i went through two episodes which were very low through uh, through the pandemic and uh, you know that was a wake up call first time in my life i had, you know sort of emotions i'd never had before Uh, and also my professional state so a lot of retooling has happened in these last 9 months uh, and a reassessment of the professional value and professional impact uh, that i create uh, and the last thing is gratitude uh, so in some ways this was uh, this pause was very useful in in allowing us to step back and look at everything that is great in our lives and appreciate what we have rather than focus on what we what we don't So let me stop there and pass it on to the next speaker. Gratitude, attitude of gratitude. Thank goodness we all are able to do this so beautifully, even though in a VR mode. Over to you, Sunita.
Over to you, Sunita. Sunita, can you uh, please unmute yourself and speak? Rajesh, you want to come back to Sunita after maybe going to Vinay? So yes. Yes. So, uh, Vinay, may I request you to please uh, share your lesson? Yeah. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yes, you are very audible. Yeah. Sunita uh, will bring you back. Yes, Vinay, please go. Lockdown or this crisis, I think uh, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, experiences uh, in India, but for me, lockdown was never, you know, implemented. Uh, I have, I happy to announce that I went to work every day, and people will ask why because we come, you know, part of essential service, and coal is very very necessary for energy security of India, so we can't stop our operations, coal production operations, and to show to our workers that we care for them, the leadership has to be there, you know, ahead of them. So I was there, you know, all those 10 months, 11 months of lockdown from March, I was there in my office, I was there in my minds, you know, most of the time. But this is a very unprecedented uh, crisis we have seen. And people are equating it to 1929 of Great Depression happened to the world, where, where uh, you know, the food was scarce, the income went down, a lot of job lost. So same thing happened here. I want to give some data before I come to my lesson. Uh, the ILO has estimate over 5 million of full-time work lost, you know, uh, in, in this pandemic. And uh, the global GDP contracted by over 21.9%. And there was a reduction of 1.5% of GDP. I'm talking about the world's GDP is roughly around $84 trillion. So 1.5% of, you know, $84.84 trillion, you can estimate how much GDP has uh, we have uh, reduced. So it's a very, very unprecedented uh, thing. Two lessons which I can uh, say. I'm very, very, uh, you know, fond of or uh, fan of Charles Darwin theory of survival of fittest. And this theory says not the stronger species, not the fittest species, but the adaptable species will, you know, they will stay for longer and they will uh, produce. So adaptation is very, very essential, uh, you know, how you react to the situation which is in front of you, how you adapt. So, and then for us, a PSU like us, where we are very, very, uh, you know, uh, poor on digital, uh, uh, adaption. So that was the key. We, we you know, lot many things we did. Uh, we have to suddenly uh, move from a lot of physical meetings to online meetings. And I'm sure most of the companies who represent our sector was uh, poorly prepared on that. So we moved on that. So adaption is one lesson. And second lesson is never underestimate any job. I see people our 56,000 strong miners have, they have shown a lot of resilience. Initially, they were scared, but we said, we are there for you. We will ensure your safety and they perform like anything. And I'll tell you one figure again, generally power plant has 20 to 22 days of uh, coal stock in, in their coal yard. But during this pandemic, the coal at power plant level rose to 46 days of stock. So those things says our you know, resilience and how our work force has reacted to this pandemic. Thank you, I'll pass on to others. Wonderful, more power Wonderful. to you and uh, you know, our coal sector of India. So happy to hear from you, uh, Vinay. Yes, uh, Professor, if I could ask, your lessons, it would be wonderful to uh, hear some of them. Uh, thank you, Rajesh, uh, for this opportunity. I uh, immediately after the pandemic, there was uh, at three levels uh, the learnings that I have kind of pulled together. Uh, one of the things is that because there was so much of uh, confusion and people were trying to figure out what to do, I think uh, there were some really interesting conversations with people who hadn't seen me for 
for many, many years. And from that one question stood, which was that, uh, how is it that we were unable to even sense a magnitude, an, an event of this magnitude? What is it about the human ability to comprehend that we could look at regulatory changes, we could look at um, you know, bioterrorism as a part of our risk management process, but we never thought of a pandemic. And I think that's a question that keeps coming back over and over. The second one at a national level, I think for the first time, all of us had to kind of accept that we are in an interdependent, interconnected, symbiotic relationship between the private sector, the government, and the civil society. And I think uh, the power of the government to be a force for good, I think just uh, reaffirmed uh, during the crisis. At an organization level, coming from a space like education, I'm so proud and delighted that despite several challenges that we have faced, education as a sector has come out strong, whether it is from primary all the way up to higher education, whether it is about self-learning. I think in every way the education sector has shown how resilient it can be. Uh, Organizations for the first time put employee safety first. And again, for the first time, we saw culture in organizations actually distinguishing between an outstanding organization and an average organization. And last but not the least, I think um, I mean, I said it, and I'm just going to reaffirm the resilience of the human spirit, the resilience of being professionals in a working context. But most importantly, for people like us, I think it was about our relevance. And as the pandemic uh, eases, I think what we are left with is that the fact that we could, I, someone like me, an academic, could come on a show like this, which is a, I mean, a, a platform which is a virtual reality, and the fact that we can teach on five collaborative platforms is just indicative of the fact of the human spirit, which is not just resilient but also continues to remain relevant okay let me come back later and talk thank you beautiful so how often have we heard that word resilience and resilience is not about what others do but about what each of us have done in our respective roles and situations so fantastic over to you akil we'd like to hear your perspective about lessons learned during the pandemic during the crisis uh, thank you, Rajesh. And this is a fantastic format. Is, uh, I love this uh, new style. So, Rajesh, I would like to make a few admissions and in the spirit of professional uh, colleagues around. Uh, many of us, and me in particular, I was accustomed to... Sorry to interject, Akil. Uh, I'm I going to request you to be a little louder. Little louder, please, for our audience. Okay. Is this better now? Is this yes, better? better. Better. Okay. So I will make a few admissions. One, <clears throat> like few of us, at least I was accustomed to two things. I thought I was in control of many things, and I was in a position of predictability. And I'm being very uh, candid about it here, um, because we knew what to do, how to do it, and control outcomes to a large extent. This particular period of one year taught me a lesson that sometimes you got to understand that things are not predictable and you must actually realize and accept the fact that control is not everything that you felt was you were in charge, but you are not in charge. Now, I'm not saying out of arrogance or anything, but this loss of control did uh, create anxiety in some stage, uh, predictability, and uh, what um, uh, Gyan mentioned, that staying away from people from whom I start, you know, was my style of traveling and meeting people face to face, refusing to do uh, online coaching, etc., saying that, that is not effective. I was set in some of those patterns for simple reason. I was getting energy from people I was meeting and interacting with, and there's no harm in doing that. But this time I realized that I had to do substitution, control myself, and slowly it dawned on me that Actually, if I tried, I was able to adapt. And I like the way uh, Vinay mentioned, uh, uh, whatever theory Darwin mentioned, etc. But adaptability was always 
a part of our uh, life. But this time I realized I could adapt much more and much faster than what was uh, what I thought was possible. <clears throat> to use a Hindi phrase, uh, uh, I marked this year with two items very, very central to my inside was sugar and sabar. And to translate, sugar is gratitude and thank you, God, thank you, Lord, whatever that, you know, thanks for everything that I have started appreciating many things. Um, and I wouldn't use jargons like minimalism or frugality, etc. But I did realize that I didn't need so many things that I was hoarding all the time. And sabar was the fact that next week I'll complete one year of being homebound, which is so unlike my personality, taught me a lesson that if I want to do something, I want to achieve something, I'm capable. So all this stubbornness and pig-headedness that was inbuilt in, inside me, and I'm being very honest about it, started eroding and a realization has come to me that when time needs to change change fast change gracefully and change for better so yeah it was a big learning experience this year i wouldn't like to carry on for very long uh, this year this type of experience for very long uh, uh, but at the same time while it happened it happened and uh, the fact that we have not seen our daughter for one year and not meeting friends over has been the negative part of this experience. But I guess we all have learned and will learn how to cope with these separations and uh, um, uh, anxiety that it brings. But overall, it has been a big, big learning experience. Thank you, Rajesh. Lovely. So, Shukar and Sabar suddenly became far more clear thanks to uh, the crisis brought on us, uh, you know, suddenly being unawares and this crisis appearing. So I'm going to check if, uh, you know, we can hear Sunita now. Sunita, can you say hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. So I'm going to request you, Sunita, to share your lessons. And then I'll come to you, Devi, brother. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, yeah, sorry for the sound thing. Uh, I think... You know, I've heard everybody and for everybody, it has been very, very dramatic, uh, this. Uh, and I think that also st stands true for all the people watching us. Uh, for me, uh, I was in, I live in Sweden. My parents live in India. My uh, brother lives in Philippines. And, uh, and before the pandemic, I always thought I could live anywhere I want. And uh, everybody I want to be with is just a flight away. You know, that's, that was my way of thinking. And uh, suddenly everything changed. I think just like Gyan said, uh, who is important to you and what is important to you really came in perspective. One of the things that, uh, you know, for me personally, uh, I'm a very keen observer of nature. I observe uh, things happening around me as well as nature of human beings. And this gave a huge opportunity to really look uh, and uh, reflect on uh, how things are. One of the things that stunned me, you know, everybody, all of us, uh, we were focusing on, of course, all the things that we were losing. But I was also noticing a uh, lot of good things that were happening uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, when it comes to the earth, I saw the carbon emissions went down uh, almost by 17 percent initially. Uh, traffic congestion was going down, pollution, water pollution, air pollution was going down, wildlife movement was increasing. Many things that I had been, you know, want, wishing for, for planet Earth were happening very positively. And, and suddenly that made me think of how, you know, I think for humankind it became as a mirror. Because uh, I suddenly realized how the economic activities that we do all the things that we want to do and the way we do it, how that is, is at uh, cross purpose with the health of the planet and also how compromised we ourselves are when we, when it comes to our health, when it comes to our relationships, when we're building an extremely unsustainable place for ourselves and everybody else. And I think this uh, for me, uh, and I also hope for uh, you know, many others, it's a wake-up call. 
uh, and for me, the lessons, you know, one of the things you asked Rajesh was, what are the lessons you learned? And for me, one of the big lessons became, uh, if we don't learn our lessons, then nature is going to teach us. I think that was, you know, a huge thing for me. Uh, because between in the battle between man and nature, I have always seen nature wins. So I think it is a huge wake up call for for all of us, and we really need to think what is it that we need to do differently. And the second Not thing I really thing. learned was uh, was how powerful human beings are, and we create and we also destroy. And we wish that from you know moving on from here, we we create a better world for ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Sunita. If we don't wake up, nature will wake us up and teach us lessons. Wonderful. So, Debi, I'm going to request you now to share your perspectives, please. Okay. Thank you, Rajesh. Um, a big hello to my fellow panel members and uh, listeners around. Um, on the hindsight, I, I felt uh, there are uh, quite a number of learnings and positive things that has happened, uh, which might sometimes in future outnumber the pain that we went through. Um, and uh, my reaction is a little bit personal as well as professional, both in terms of learning. We all started up the lockdown and, you know, uh, with a lot of enthusiasm to see it first panicky and then enthusiasm. And then we said, um, you know, let's focus on self, cooking, exercising, all that we did. But as the dust settled down and months passed by, I realized that there are some things that we need to do more than this. And I think that's the time I, I, I kind of rediscovered myself a little bit and uh, I discovered some of the core values. One, uh, um, one uh, Akhil said, uh, Sukar, the gratitude. I think uh, last few months I have devoted a lot of time talking and counseling to a lot of industry leaders and students where whatever way I could make a difference to their life and uh, their purpose. And um, so that was something I loved and I discovered my passion there. Um, from professional, I, I mentored uh, almost four companies and um, I, I realized that there are a few learnings uh, which are so important. One is that just don't panic. I mean, I, I saw the first few months, so much of speculation, so much of negativity, so much of uh, loud noise around. I always told my clients and I sat with them and I said, don't panic. I think it is time to be positive, stay positive and face the situation. And believe it or not, most of the clients are doing much better than we expected right from the right at the beginning of this pandemic. And we always believed, I believe myself, and I saw it, that there are ways to do things. There are always alternative ways. So when the crisis comes, there are opportunities also. And there are alternative ways to handle things. I think that was a big learning. And the way the leadership and the organizations, the, including our own country, um, adapted to uh, new practices, the way they implemented those large scale changes, okay, including completely working from home, getting onto technology, pushing uh, 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 new ways of working, uh, it was amazing. So, so I'm quite positive at the end of it, thinking that, look, I think there are huge amount of opportunities which show up when there is a crisis. I think how do we prepare there and how do we recognize those and how do we go ahead and use those to our advantage um, is, uh, is the key. And finally, I think um, this crisis also taught me individually as you now leave the day, uh, leave it one day at a time and do whatever you like to do and uh, invest on yourself. Wow. Wonderful. Face the situation 
and you will see opportunities in crisis well said uh, over to you rohit we'd like to get your views on the same sure sure thanks so much thanks for having me here i think it's been uh, it's been fantastic to hear uh, hear all the thoughts till now and so many of them are so unique and um, very very personal so uh, i've learned a lot you know from from hearing all my fellow panelists uh for me uh the pandemic was um, in in some i got it at two levels at a professional level from organization standpoint the what and how of impact to organizations and the what and how of impact to ourselves so uh for the first one on the impact to organizations so i still remember it so clearly i think uh, 3rd march or 4th march uh, we were on the headlines you know my company was on the headlines of times of india i think uh, the sixth employee the sixth person uh, or the fifth or sixth person in india was an employee from our organization right so uh from that standpoint um it was something that it obviously it happened to somebody else right it happens it happens to you and we were so concerned uh that experience uh you know how do you, how do you reduce the potential panic uh, the sop that we had, uh, we had created to kind of handle some of this stuff uh, like closing down offices uh getting employees tested working through with the government who was i think phenomenal in terms of helping us uh, with with it it was new to it was new to india you know I, I, uh, at that time uh protocols coming into office if if ever we kind of you know, came into office health of our employees being above anything else even before any lockdown was announced uh and the criticality of having an emergency response team to to kind of you know, come into some of these things because it was something as uh, i i i i think sunita said was something completely unexpected you know uh, uh, you know we, we think we plan for so many things but for planning for something like this is something that uh, you know many companies uh, don't do so i think we were fortunate to have done you know something around it then at a at at a different level uh, working from home consistently 100% of employees working from home consistently uh, and trying to do that and make it happen and keeping employees in, engaged was was another uh, was, was another big learning the fact that cash is king uh, i think we've seen it in all 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 crises and and even now uh, how organizations have to really uh, focus on productivity focus on getting costs down uh, and, uh, and and really uh, coping with something like this again was was a huge learning uh, the element of csr and the importance of organizations contributing to community and society uh you know we i think everybody have heard hears of csr and i think many organization contributed to it but i think the the the, the 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 kind of humanity of it all you know in in this pandemic was even more exponentially magnified as there were so many examples of, of individuals and, and and companies who came out and they uh, and they helped shape uh, shape the lives and, and situations uh, in um, you know in doing this there is period at a personal level I think I resonated with what Gyan said, you know, as uh, I started the conversation about how relationships and life uh, have been tested, uh, how we interact with our friends, our family, our relatives, our near and dear ones, how we switch off work and kind of re-energize our, ourselves. You know, it was so how we used to travel and sports and entertainment. Um, you know, physical proximity has has been a rarity. Uh, you know, in this virtual world, as as like Akil was mentioning for the last one year, you know, he's been with his house, his his his, his, his he hasn't seen his kids for the last one year. No, exactly goes. So me and my wife Swati, you know, we, you know, we haven't seen them in the last one as well. So I think a lot of these elements have got, at a personal level, have got really reshaped, and they mean, um, you know, they mean so much more than maybe what they have meant in the past. Uh, the personal losses that all of us have faced. I mean, you know, I mean, there's, uh, I mean, I, I can say for myself, uh, somebody's father who I know, somebody's uncle, somebody's friend, uh, you know, has has passed away, uh, you know, and and has passed away silently, you know, without anybody. being by their side you know without uh, with with the family seeing their face from a distance uh you know um, i i just can't um, i mean i i it's i just can't get over that you know to 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 have a parent who's lived with you who's brought you up the entire life and then and then suddenly you know you're in a hospital they're in a hospital and you just see their face and then you know they're packed off uh, you know and to see bodies on on tv in new york or the number of people who've died you know in in isolation i, I think it it comes back to the value of uh, life and uh, personal well-being and health uh, as a subject that cannot be delegated or postponed uh, you know it is critical that we we kind of you know take it upon ourselves uh, you know and, and that's again what what jan mentioned about you know how he's focused on on his health and um, how how he's kind of you know come you know come to so many of the of these things um uh, i can really resonate with uh, with akil's uh, shukar and uh, sabar Uh, for me uh, uh, one of the quotes i kind of you know uh, you know anchor to and i really uh, love is uh, life is not about what uh, cards you have been dealt it is more about 
how you play with those cards to uh, to maximize what is important to you. Uh, so, from, from sugar and sour standpoint, I think we need to be even more aware about our vulnerabilities and be grateful for every day that we are with our families and friends, you know, and we, and we need to live our life to the fullest. So, this is some of you know my learning from the pandemic. How powerful were they, uh, Rohit? Each of you makes us think, and I feel as if all the points raised by each of you also resonates with me. I feel the same. Life and relationships have been not only tested but are getting reshaped. Powerful. Over to you, uh, Tanaya, for your perspective. Hello, Rajesh. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, good evening, friends. I've worked with a number of you. Uh, so for me, what uh, this pandemic taught me was something called CCA. No, I don't mean the controller of certifying authorities, but Kamaraji. I saw Egyptian, Sri Lankans, Indians, Filipinos, British, Italians come together for a common purpose and cause. Communication, mental, personal, financial, and agility. So this is the CCA which I learned, uh, friends. Because uh, we are an engineering and EPC projects company. And I remember that a number of my colleagues went down with COVID and Kuwait, and I just come back from Kuwait. And these are mostly people who are on site who don't have families. We immediately got into action and started calling them. Some of them didn't want their families to be informed of what was happening to them. You know, when you saw those beds, it was just a barren bed with a socket. We got into actions. I mean, it was it was um, amazing to see that, you know, the world was one. It didn't matter what religion, what uh, which nationality you were. Everybody rushed to hell. Uh, we were packing kits. We were ensuring that we moved our people to uh, because you see, it was it was getting to uh, areas where we had in Mahabula and you know where we had most of the the authorities which were there. And we didn't really know, uh, but everybody was taken care of. We, we got into rapid action, uh, ensured that people were taken care of, even their tablets were taken care of. Families, uh, we spoke to families, organized wellness uh, so that uh, there was, you know, because you can, there were so many deaths which were happening, which was just not funny. And I completely relate to what Rohit was saying. Um, and of course, the, the third thing was being completely agile because this was something different. This was something which was very real. It was something which you really had to take quick, rapid action. So what this taught me was really CCA, uh, very, very briefly, Rajesh. Wow. Camaraderie, compassion, agility matter to each and every one of us on this planet. Very well said, uh, Tanaya. I am going to request uh, Suku to please uh, share his perspective. Uh, Suku, you are also in a place which probably has has been most affected in terms of human lives. Uh, please share if there's you know some experience that you can connect to and then your uh, perspectives, your lessons from the same. Definitely. Thanks, Rajesh. Uh, um, well, 2020 has uh, <clears throat> taught uh, all of us something. And to me, the important lesson that I learned is speed is a choice. Uh, pandemic taught us how quickly we are, a we are capable of adapting to change. Within the months of pandemic, we adjusted to um, living our lives very, very differently. Uh, I was also able to witness, you know, how um, India handled uh, the pandemic and how U.S. handled uh, the the pandemic. Um, there was a lockdown uh, very clearly enforced in India, um, but in the U.S., you know, yeah, there are some certain rules and people are expected to follow the rules and 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 make their own choice. So it was very different kind of an experience I was, you know, going through. You know, when people say, "Oh, I can't go out of the house. I can't do this. I can't do that." In India. But in US, you know, we had a little bit of flexibility. We have a choice to make, um, um, choice to make, uh, but actually uh, try to be responsible as as much as uh, uh, possible. 
Uh, personally, you know, I it was it was a little different for me because uh, my first daughter, she started her high school in the midst of the pandemic this year, and my second daughter, she actually started her school life kindergarten in the midst of the pandemic this year. My nephew started his uh, first year of engineering. in the uh, everything through the remote learning all three of them were going through the remote learning and it it made me to really be puzzled you know how we really learn uh, what is the pace at which we learn and how what is the mode we adopt in learning you know was was very 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 different and it also showed how quickly we can adapt to these changes that we need to go through really i truly experienced one other interesting thing is that because i had to spend uh, uh, do my work from home i had time to actually learn something uh, with my um, my 14 year old daughter so we both actually uh, learned and completed a design thinking course i would have never done one such learning if i had to go to work with uh, with uh, everything going on we've been accusing that technology um, separated us and the technology is making human uh, um human beings less social it actually you know uh, brought us together uh, during the pandemic and another important lessons i learned is that uh, uh, actually i got sick in the middle of the pandemic and uh, i learned one very strong lesson is that first i should take care of me for me to take care of others i learned the importance and the true meaning of overall wellness and the mental health i realized that the worst enemy is only in our head i learned another very interesting thing is that uh, sleep is not the rest sleep is very very different from um a rest um i learned the meaning of what is the uh, truly essentials in life for the first time i learned that it's okay to slow down suddenly i i understood you know how lucky i am to have a life i have today and i'm i'm lot more much more thankful uh, much more uh, sincere and uh, committed to a meaningful contribution back to the community and you know suddenly i feel that you know i have to live more uh, meaningful uh, more meaningful life and start doing things to live a more meaningful life so the 2020 has been you know very interesting um in 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 more more different ways to me thanks rajesh so enriching suku and each of you is adding so many different uh, perspectives isn't it beautiful the diversity of thoughts even when we have so many similarities in some of the perspectives there's so much that each one is adding thanks so much for that anil over to you uh we'd like to get your thoughts on uh, lessons learned from this crisis thank you rajesh uh, you are thinking about the diversity of uh, thought and uh, i hear you know after listening to so many people have been thinking you know i would say my old, old example you know i'm you made me to think like elizabeth taylor's uh, seventh husband you know standing outside the bedroom Uh, and thinking you know i know what to do but i don't know how to do it differently so let me see how different can i be uh, one uh, you know I, i i will keep you know my thoughts more around organizations rather than personal because i think uh, uh, most of us have touched upon that part so just because of that uh, to avoid the repetition uh, one i strongly believe nothing is as good as it appears and nothing is as bad at it, as it appears and i think in one year we have seen all of us have seen you know how situation looked and how today situation uh, is as compared to that two lessons uh, you know i'll go back to my military you know learnings my army learnings and uh, uh, would say not new lessons but i uh, did get reminded of those so first lesson is the more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war and rohit i think somewhere rightly gave example of his organization which i think seem to be you know more prepared uh, uh, to handle this uh, particular crisis so what i mean when i say 
more you sweat in peace and i have worked with lot with uh, startup ecosystem and during this period i have a few of the organization that i used to work which have totally shut down i have which are some of them which are maintaining uh, and surviving and have organizations uh, who are really doing very well and you know making use of this particular uh, opportunity so what i have seen there first don't over leverage learn to grow with the means within the means i would say unless you are prepared to die and people who are over leverage i think for the ones who were first casualty in this particular uh, period so we thought things are easy we can you know uh, expand grow take uh, money and depend on somebody else but it uh, uh, certainly hit us badly second important within that i would say you know people who trained and practice for this to work in this vuca world so uh, now we have really realized what this volatile uncertain complex ambiguous world that we are in and how do we live in this world how do we work in this world and how do we succeed i think we need to uh, train for it we need to uh, practice it in the peace time Uh, also bcp i think was one example one thing that rohit uh, mentioned i uh, need to have to face different kind of business dif- disruptions and uh, i have also seen not just this uh, ever since i started uh, you know working in 90 uh, we had uh, some of the disruptions in india and there after the dot com and 911 and you know many more uh, that have uh, uh, happened uh, the financial crisis and now this particular crisis so the crisis keep coming again and again also very important is you need to build those trusted partnerships and relationships during the peace time so that they get tested and they come handy when we are in a war situation so that's the first uh, point the more we sweat in peace the less we bleed in war second again from a military book that i remember uh, written by field marshal william Sm- uh, smile which is uh, defeat into victory so many organizations i saw were able to create or you know use this opportunity this crisis to transform it into an opportunity to fortify so we were able to you know put our house in order uh, able to you know those organizations were able to pivot if required uh, also it was a good time to experiment uh, some of things which were not allowed maybe during normal times if you took that chance uh, uh i think people and boards were open uh, to it uh, also taking some of the tough decisions many times we hesitated i think this was a good uh, time for leaders to uh, take tough decisions uh, it could be even asking few uh, such people who to whom you didn't want you know within the organization to go some businesses that you wanted to cut down something else and Uh, acquiring capabilities i think again it was a great time for people who had this opportunity building partnerships acquisitions or getting talent that you couldn't afford earlier uh, investing into uh, developing people and uh, developing leaders again it was a good time uh, to do that uh, so really you know trying to convert this defeat into victory uh, last but not least i will say i think we all to learn to be calm to be patient to be resil- resilient uh, to be positive uh, frame of mind and last but not the least as i said be human being humane and this attitude of gratitude i think that's most important thank you convert defeat into victory uh, so wonderful uh, anil to hear that and how individuals and organizations can practice that and all the time thanks so with that brings us to our last round table uh, panelist bhavesh it's over to you you are in a different uh, continent and we are talking more about uh, india asia and uh, us perhaps a little bit of uh, perspective from your side would be beautiful before i before i sum it up and uh, you know we can end the first part of this uh, yes your uh, thoughts please thank you rajesh uh, the rajesh if i am not audible enough let me know uh, yeah you are always audible it's perfect thank you uh, the vampires of anxiety and agility haunted me and the angel of hope uh, also blessed me uh, let me here's my first offering uh, 
a dispassionate take on crisis or COVID, the COVID carnage is only rigorous on immunodeficient. So those immunocompromised uh, organizations or human beings uh, are vulnerable. Now you see the profoundness and futility of this realization that this, this anxiety vampire clouds our judgment. We went through, in spite of all collective wisdom humankind had, we went through a lot of anxiety not knowing how to react and the crisis impact was augmented because we thought it's, it's, it's global, but over a period of time, and now we have the pleasure and the benefit of hindsight wisdom, we know that the impact was not all pervasive. The impact was more on the immunocompromised, be it immunocompromised organizations where there is a lack of trust, resource, lack of capability, alignment, or governance, be it country, be it family, be it personal self. So that was one of the profound realization that came that this vampire of anxiety can blur your common sense. It can blur your ability to take action. So uh, was I a victim of this? Yes. But here lies the epiphany. To be resilient, of course, is easy to be said than to be done. But identify ring fence, build firewall, defenses around your vulnerability and still move on. Now what happened is, in my case, let me bring it to the context. Uh, like Anil, I would uh, I am restricting to more to my organizational context and the African Rwandan context. Rajesh, correction: I am now the business head for na last uh, 18 months for Rwanda. Uh, in my previous role, Safal Group operated in 12 countries, and I was head of talent and training. So now, uh, in in the in my pursuit to to revitalize the organization, uh, which I started the role in 19, uh, I had in line with our corporate strategy to build African talent, uh, we had uh, rationalized the workforce and got the African talent into the leadership role directly reporting in. So team was new, team was half-baked. And then came the uh, vampire of uh, anxiety, that is COVID that came. So to give you another context on Rwanda, now unlike other countries, Rwanda had the tailwind benefit of uh, one of the finest the governance in terms of excellence, effectiveness, and empathy, uh, because uh, uh, because of the way it is governed and led by His Excellency uh, uh, um, uh, His Excellency Paul Kagame, that uh, compliance of any intervention is is good. So that are the 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 tailwinds we had, but also we have the African headwinds like any other the tininess of the organization. Uh, the resource uh, handicap, uh, the capability handicap. So these uh, uh, these augment the impact of the, the crisis. Now, in my case, organization is newly led. Uh, we have uh, interplay of language, Francophone, Anglophone, and Kenya Rwanda. We have digital ability, uh, adaptability at nascent stage. Uh, and uh, we have high power distance and high context culture. And in that, to remain meaningful, uh, to get meaning to team and to uh, to to give meaning to yourself first, so get you you get conviction and then to operate. Like in India, similarly, we had lockdown and uh, right now we're just ending the second uh, lockdown. So in this context, the the anxiety vampire kind of blurred our vision. Uh, uh, then later on, we, we we kind of filtered and rather. Then having cluster bombing, we had laser guided precision uh, interventions which have worked. We are functional. Uh, fortunately, my employees are safe uh, on personal ground. My family, my mother was stuck in uh, London coming back to Kigali where she lived with me. We had to bring her here. My son was stuck in Canada. Uh, I had to bring him here. We are all together. And uh, the angel of hope really uh, blessed us. Uh, the time at your disposal uh, during walk, uh, lockdown, I had. 82 calls of one and a half hour on WhatsApp with four people and very engaging four people each. So my relationship quotient was strengthened. Um, I watched my honeymoon, my, my wedding photographs more dearly, uh, uh, collated all photographs and memories positively, shared it to the respective people. So that was fulfilling and rewarding as um, rebuilding, uh, making best of the time. Uh, 
So the, the lesson learned are the profoundness of uh, anxiety virus. It can haunt you if we if you are not able to see through it. Of course, I have this benefit of hindsight wisdom now. The second one is that agility vampire. That means making things function in a most difficult terrain in Africa with all handicap, how to remain operational. Uh, in normal life, we take, take it for granted, so many things. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, in Rwanda, the best thing that happened and the most revered practice is every last Saturday of the month, we have Umuganda, where the all offices are closed and there's a community involved, cleans, cleanse, uh, uh, cleaning uh, ritual that has been done since years. So that, imagine, was done physically. The community got together, you go to neighborhood and you clean. So that could not be done. We had month and car free days and uh, we don't have any car flying on the road and we all walk and run and have music and all that could not be done. So uh, institutionalized good practices were put on hold because of lockdown and because of the physical uh, distance that we have to observe. So the benefits you might have as a society which are revered and uh, giving reward but that can be the crisis can take them away but it is up to you how do you convert that. Uh, my uh, as Anil says, the defeat into a victory. So these are my lessons. Uh, thank you for having me here. Oh, these were so amazing. And I'm going to quickly capture for the benefit of our audience. Audiences, if you have been listening very keenly, which I'm sure you have been doing, wonderful. But I'm going to give you the headlines now as I have, you know, understood them, noted them. And uh, here are some of them. So I'm also give you, going to give you the names in case you want to uh, tweet, you want to post them on LinkedIn, uh, you want to put it on Insta, whichever platform you are on, or you simply want to have a, a discussion around it, I welcome you to do that. Uh, I'm going to give you a random ones and not particularly in the same order in which they said. Uh, Gyan started with probably the essence of it all, understanding life's meaning. He also spoke about shocks to system are required. The collateral damage perhaps we can do without, but for simply, you know, uh, strengthening us and for recognizing what we need to do more of, those shocks are essential. One of the great learnings which everyone had, which Gyan started off uh, with, was reassessment. Vinay spoke about the sector which employs thousands and thousands of people in such difficult work. So for some, what it taught me is that, uh, you know, the, for the nation to run, there are those who cannot even rest in pandemic. So never underestimate any job. 56,000 of them were working while we were in lockdown and relatively protected. Uh, that was Vinay. Professor uh, Vasanti spoke about something which perhaps each one of us has realized, but she put it so beautifully, we are all interconnected in a symbiotic relationship. It's no surprise that uh, you know, our Panchatatra, our uh, uh, scriptures often say, Udara Charita Nam Tu Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, right? Ways to differentiate organizations depend on resilience of human spirit. Okay. <laughs> about sh shukar and sabar, gratitude and patience, and the human ability to adapt in crisis truly comes out. Sunita, I think, mentioned that which is very evident some for most of us, but there may be some who may not have noticed. The planet seems to be healing while humans seem to, be, seem to have been ill or having been in crisis. But the planet is healing. And this gives us a wake up call that if we don't learn the lessons, nature will teach us. But she also spoke about the human spirit and how humans are powerful and can do whatever they like. We don't need a crisis to teach us these lessons. We can work proactively. Devi said, I actually got an opportunity to discover my own core values and my uh, own passions. Facing the situation, being positive because there are opportunities hidden in every crisis. Don't we know that? But we needed a crisis to teach us that some organizations and individuals learned it better than the other. Rohit 
ask the question how are we contributing to society how are we contributing to the world that we are a part of rohit also spoke about relationships and life they are being tested and they are also being reshaped are we playing the cards that we are dealt with in a smart way that's going to make a difference tanaya brought out everything in three words an acronym called cca camaraderie compassion and agility so succinctly put and i think that covers everything suku was extremely philosophical in fact this is what also the crisis has done to many of us and rightly so because philosophy is all about wisdom and i think wisdom comes out in crisis much better than uh, other times he said sleep is not rest rest is something else and is your mind at rest are we learning to relax our mind further also said speed is a choice and how the youngest and youngest and the older and the oldest if i can call it that are learning to learn in different ways and at different speeds anil brought all his uh philosophy and principles learnt in the different services to bear he spoke about the more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war we've heard this but it suddenly became far more uh, alive uh with the examples that anil gave he also shared how defeat can be converted into victory organizations who are over leveraged in normal times actually fell by the wayside and those who were managing themselves uh you know in a i would say a more controlled restrained manner continued to survive and even come out of the crisis today they are thriving finally we had bhavesh bhavesh gave us two unique phrases he said can you fight the vampires of anxiety with the angels of hope so beautiful i also captured a couple of again uh, powerful messages that he gave us he spoke about how good governance actually you know comes far more to benefit during these uh, crisis times rwanda even though a very small nation is one of the best governed nations with a small economy but a thriving one doing very well are uh, are we dispassionate to crisis and last but not the least he spoke about a uh, you know a, 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 an institutionalized best practice in the nation the last saturday of the month entire community actually takes its time out to put it into what in india would we would probably call safe so friends that brings us to the end of part 1 i want to thank all of you first of all audiences i think there are um, probably a uh, several thousands of you on different media but at least a few hundreds are already there on youtube and many more will join us at the time that they would like to you know they are comfortable to log into and friends in the room you are doing amazing i think uh, so wonderfully you got us all excited and uh, all that you have said is being treated so you deserve a quick break of 5 minutes to get yourself to grab yourself another cup of uh, coffee uh, while you remain in the room virtually uh, i'm going to give you a couple of uh, minutes uh, before we start our part 2 yes so really uh, good job rajesh thank you uh, gyan in the meantime i'll try and capture some of the messages that we have got from uh, social media get yourself a coffee friends thank you thank you so while thank our panelists are getting themselves a cup of coffee i'm going to read out two questions which have come i will uh, address this question later but i for the benefit of all our audiences and uh, even our panelists who are in the room uh, gunidhi singh has asked this question we we can, we can take it later how difficult was it for managements of organizations 
to have trust and faith in employees in the work from home scenario because lockdown was mandated and initially at least companies didn't have a choice i think even now uh, this question is very pertinent we will take this uh, for sure gunidhi i think it's very pertinent i myself have seen that lots of organizations and especially the managers were having a tough time to uh, understand this new scenario first of all so faith and trust i think uh, depended a lot on the innate personalities of managers and the cultures of organization that's one question uh, murthy has put a question specifically to bhavesh bhavesh you can uh, you know take note of it mentally and respond to it later which are the two things that change for good in business and people did you see something that was uh you know very very uh, uh, clear to you and one more question okay. oh questions are flowing from you bhavesh more maybe because uh some of the things you said came from a context of a nation we don't hear from very often uh bhavesh what would you advise young east african millennials in terms of adjusting to the very very uh, malleable uh, future uh one more for bhavesh bhavesh what would be your advice for teachers especially in africa during these unprecedented times uh, uh so uh, panelists we will come back in just another 2 minutes but i am reading out two more questions before we resume and these questions are for you to think over because we are going to now start designing the future so one way is to understand what our audience is asking and build from there onwards anand gurie one of our all of these are mthrs and uh, anand has been there for a long long time with our group is asking did uh, ai uh, you know was this introduced in your organizations during the pandemic and that was uh, a question which has been asked to everyone again a uh, uh, question for bhavesh i think more specifically because uh uh maybe bhavesh referred to this in different ways which are the two things oh yeah it's the same question all right uh i'll go further i'll give you one last question and then we will uh, uh, go to our part 2 ha huh. so question specifically for rohit uh, but anybody can respond to this later but rohit please take note what were some of the policies you were forced to tweak or change during the pandemic all right so my dear panelists are you back in can we have a quick uh, yes from each of you yes pravanda is here yes sanil is here yes we are back okay yes pravanda is here i am back yes i'm here sunita super all right folks uh tons of questions flowing in that's how engaging you have been as a group uh, dear friends tons of questions i read out maybe five or six i have at least four more and uh, our volunteers who are doing a great job on social media are themselves picking out this question so maybe there are a lot more that came that sounded similar just think about the number of questions that are flowing in thanks to the conversation we've just had so kudos to you all right so now we will get back into part 2 and i want to uh, remind you uh, that this part 2 is now about designing the future let me give a context about what we mean by designing the future several of you said and i will pick on uh, what anil said and anil specifically spoke about the army axiom uh, which speaks about sweating in peace so that we can bleed lesser in war if that is to be used now what do we change in the future can we be more mindful more conscious more aware if to do that what would we do differently now in society in organizations and in the home some of it of course came from your lessons itself but this time i'd like you to be even more pointed and say here are two or three things which i am doing 
or I am helping my organization do. Let's go backwards now, if that's okay. We will start with uh, Bhavesh and we will come anti-clockwise, uh, ending with uh, Gyan. Uh, requesting each of you, uh, you've been doing fantastic, but request each of you to keep yourself to four minutes so that we can get more responses to questions. If you can do below four minutes, even better. Bhavesh, over to you. Thank you very much. I, I would have a very spiritual take on uh, designing the future, learning from the crisis. Uh, the vampires of anxiety and agility can be slayed with our spiritual wisdom. Uh, I think we need to celebrate. I think we need to have detox from over dependencies. Uh, uh, what is happening? The new crisis cannot be designed. The, the new crisis response cannot be designed from the viewpoint of COVID. It may totally take us off balance and tomorrow it could be an internet outage. Let's say tomorrow, what if internet got COVID or electricity got COVID? So what we need to do is to be prepared and embed in our regular life, a celibate or a, a spiritual detox from such systems. Like Rwanda has a car free day, one half day in, uh, in, in a month. Why can't we plan things and embed into our design uh, uh, electricity and internet free and electricity and internet free half day a month. So our today's generation, which is assuming and taking it for, for granted, the internet and the electricity dependencies, such things can be negated and we would be prepared. So the gist of what I'm trying to say is learn to live without the obvious uh, things that are taken for granted is my first uh, design input in our disaster response uh, design for the future. So that's my first take. My second take on this issue is how do we create a system or which encompasses all the three levels, that is the, the, the individual level, the social level, and the structural level in terms of the will and the skill uh, to implement the change. The biggest impediment in any solution or crisis response in the future is our ability to implement and in a collective space where a lack of implementation at one space or one part of the whole ecosystem can de take away or negate the benefit of the rest uh, when we are interconnected. So how do we get and rally the support of everybody? See, thinking part is cognition. We need the best think tanks to find out the solution. But implementing is like, you know, I, I, as I uh, say, 90 percentage is strategizing, but another not 10, but another 90 percentage is implementing. So how do we implement in an engaged fashion and in a resilient fashion and take lessons from what India did? Take uh, we had we had rhythms and rituals. Uh, some may be ridiculed, some may be debatable, but we had uh, Janta curfew, we had uh, lighting of lap, Italians uh, and French dance from the windows, uh, uh, they created uh, frontline respect symbols. Uh, so how in a collective interconnected world do we implement the bare minimum where today in polarized world we have a right to disagree on everything. So there in implementation in our future design, we need to equip cultural nuances, we need to equip social um, nuances, and we need to implement the individual nuances. And when do democracy end where there is a collective uh, issue for everybody? To re, uh, to re uh, summarize what I said, uh, spiritual celibate from our big, biggest dis, uh, dependencies is, is important. And second part is how do we implement? Thank you. Thanks, Bhavesh. So, friends, if you are listening, uh, just one thing I'm going to pick from everyone in the end, I'll summarize. But uh, what I picked up is a different kind of celibacy. This celibacy is keeping away from those devices which keep us occupied all the time. And of course, a uh, uh, collective implementation, a large scale implementation. Over to you, Anil. Hi, Rajesh. So again, uh, you know, you started with the, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. And in fact, that's my 
a first uh, point when you're talking uh, what to do in future as uh, i won't you know deliberate more on that uh, second point you know more again from an organizational point of view how i see a uh, couple of things which are really uh, important first is in how do we find and communicate who we are so it's becoming more and more i would say difficult in this environment to create communicate and to live uh, the organizational purpose the values and the culture that we want to create so uh, that that's first how do we do that and i don't have an answer i'm just putting this as a uh, you know pointer that this is one area certainly needs where organization have to uh, work on second how do we build or rebuild the operating uh, model and especially for growth now uh, as things are coming to normal see the some organizations have got wiped out uh, things have changed and there i would say first would be you know to accept the change i think that's the most difficult part many a times so to accept that this is for real and to adapt and we have been talking about that so it's accept the change and please change uh, that's important other few areas where uh, no answers but questions how do we communicate in this uh, new ways of working new ways of operating how do you know we bring collective knowledge collective you know decision making uh, shared thoughts uh, together and how do we you know take those decisions fast how do we learn and how do we accelerate learning in this distributed environment that's uh, another area how do we structure uh, uh, i think the structures have to be relooked uh, in a big way i would say and even the work itself that gets done how does that get assigned how does that get distributed uh, how do we train people to you know do the job and to perform better how do we observe that performance which is happening uh, from anywhere in remote and uh, digital environment how do we measure that even if we you know observe how do we uh, measure that i think these are uh, some of things uh, which are very very uh, important and last i would say how can we be more digital yet how can we be more human thank you lovely the big question how are we how can we be digital uh, tech focused and yet be more human so uh, we are going great however need to remind uh, you know the rest of the panelists i'm going to request you to please limit yourself a little bit on time only so that we can take more questions at the end uh, friends and then you can be when your responses better into those over to you uh, suku you have three minutes okay i'm i i made my uh, first part more you know personal and uh, philosophical i'm going to make this part a little bit more you know professional um i think you know if we go back to the environment um i foresee that you know there is going to be at least 40 50 percentage of the workforce to be do you know joining us as a freelancer gig economy or any other agile um, non traditional roles so we as an uh, uh, as um, as uh, hr uh, professionals we need to be um, you know uh, transforming ourselves quite a lot uh, and start thinking about how do we accommodate um, these gig workers um, um, th- that's that's one thing that i think you know we should definitely start doing it secondly um, uh, technology is something that we need to adopt much much faster than what we want so i spoke about you know speed as a choice i think you know we need to you know at a v- much faster pace we need to accept technology because uh, um i can foresee fe- you know a, a future where people don't even submit resumes and they walk into a company to attend interview uh, they may submit a you know one minute video resume and you know some bot interviews them preliminary and uh, a machine uh, and uh, a machine learning tool automatically schedule interviews for them with uh, people and in in one or two days you know they get an offer automatically so i think we ad- we adopting to the technology uh, um, in a very fast manner will help us to be a 
um, progressive uh, organization as, as a whole. Um, uh, so those are a few things that I wanted to say. But never Lovely. ever lose, uh, never ever lose your empathy, and uh, never ever you you know lose your uh, gratitude, and continue to um, keep the humane part of HR um, as you even adopt technology. Those are my few words, Rajesh. Right. So definitely you have echoed what Anil has said. Adopt tech, adopt it fast, but keep humane. humane uh values intact uh tane over to you okay earlier i told you about cca which is camaraderie communication and agility now i say caa which is change adapt and adopt uh, which is change is the reality and it needs to be embraced with open arms and also the fact that you know um the the that the change is now getting shorter. The curve of learning is becoming shorter and shorter. So which means that we have to do everything which is quickly, agile, and with speed. The other is adapt and adopt to the new environment. Unlearn, learn, and unleash one's potential to suit the new normal of artificial intelligence, IoT, bots, and machine learning. That's all that I had to say. Oh. So this is one CAA that nobody will uh, mind, uh, Tanya. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over to you, Rohit. Sure. Um, thanks. So for me, I have the future. My, my focus uh, is on leadership. I think um, in today's times, we've seen uh, a variety of leaders, a spectrum of leaders at the political level, at the organizational level, at a personal level. So. Uh, I, I, I think the leaders of the future will need to be different and more so uh, in the pandemic and after the pandemic. Uh, there will be different capabilities and capacities that organizations will look for in the leaders of the future. So as, as Suku mentioned, top of my list is empathy. Uh, I think EQ is going to be more important than IQ. Uh, how, how do we inspire is going to be more important than how smart the person I am. Second, I think leaders have to be reflective. So as we, as we co-create leadership, as we assess ourselves, as we assess leaders around us, uh, leaders who are reflective, who step back, uh, who are not just getting stuff done, who getting a who are taking a pause to kind of you know see what's happening in their life, what's happening around them. I, I think that's going to be uh, very important. I think execution, action is of course has always been very important, but I think the reflection part, in my opinion, uh, needs to be focused on uh, and uh, and reshape. Uh, authentic, you know, being true to who you are. I think the pandemic has taught me personally, and I, I, I hope many others of what is really important to us, uh, you know, and uh, uh, what matters, uh, what really matters to us. And, and I think that's where it comes, to, uh, it comes down to being authentic, uh, you know, in terms of uh, who we are, what we do, and what we want to do. Uh, openness and transparency, uh, empowering outside in ideas, so that teams can do what they want to do best. Uh, and finally, uh, be a coach and an enabler uh, as a leader. I think this is something that's not on you. Um, uh, so the development of teams, uh, you know, depends on uh, on on coaching. So, so, so I guess that that coaching part for me again is something that becomes extremely important as we go forward. I'll pause there. Powerful. So Tane has got me thinking in terms of acronyms. So Rohit just mentioned era, EQ, uh, reflection, and authenticity. Uh, more on that uh, later. I hope uh, Tane, I'm doing well. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Debi, over to you. Okay. Thanks, Rajesh. Um, uh, quick uh, pulse of wisdom that I collected and that I think will be helpful is, um, I think let's invest part of our resources and wealth to create social good, okay? uh, which is long-term and sustainable. So, be it investing on startups who are working on social space, be it um, innovators who are working for uh, larger social good. I think uh, either uh, investing or uh, supporting them, helping them. I mean, that needs to be done at every level, individually, by corporations and by the government. I think that will be the future. Um, second, I feel very strongly about is more than the vision. It's the purpose which is more meaningful. And organizations 
the individual need to stay true to their purpose okay why really do we exist for example we sat down with one of our clients together and saying that this is not the way i think what's the learning from pandemic so we said we have to orient the organization to create value for the customer okay so what do you feel at the core of your heart and that's how it should get translated i think the third thing which is important and which make me optimistic that i saw how different agencies individuals public came together to support during the pandemic i think social and business collaborations are key to survive i think let that be i i saw hundreds of examples where people uh, transgressed their way and they they amended their way to support each other um, um you know create uh, products which is required for the um for the country um i think we need to break the normal the way we look at collaboration and actually uh, try and transgress those boundaries and see something which can be which can lead to a stronger ecosystem um and uh, finally i think we need to create a better version of our own selves right be a better human being and more inspiring more energizing and uh, leave your legacy behind i think that's something which which will help us individually as well as the whole community i think those are my thoughts sir uh, rajesh as rajesh got locked rajesh can you give maybe we can have a akil ji meanwhile Share I'm part. sorry, I was on mute. I was just saying that uh, panelists, okay. all your uh, lessons are being captured and uh, posted on social media. Also, many questions are flowing, which I will, uh, you know, come to you uh, the moment we are done with uh, this part of the session. Over to you, uh, Akil. Uh, Yalla, each one is doing fantastic now with time. Please stick to your three minutes so that we can get maximum questions in. Fantastic. Over to you, Akil. <coughs> yeah sure rajesh um looking at future i look at it this way that there will be tremendous pressure on business to rebound um not only to recoup the losses paid or uh, factors that happened but also to gain territory from competitors and get an edge so with these rebounds coming in there will be lot of expectation and i'm talking about hr community on the hr for more for less and we'll have to be very realistic about how do we participate in business activities as a hr community and that brings me to a point that we will have to accept breaking away from the past in things that we are comfortable with our high potential list our succession plan i think we'll have to redo everything what was needed in leadership succession is not needed is not going to be needed in the future and we must get real and make sure that we revisit them just because they were there they are not sacrosanct they are not holy cows second i feel that the organization will itself have fluid organization moving around and as as a result of that there, there won't be any neat nice little boxes in organization chart describing jobs and content they'll be fluid three jobs will be done by two people which means a lot of people will have to do real reskilling all this time in hr we have been talking about reskilling retraining now it will be real test whether we are really reskilling them or not and the last part is that in all these things empathy will have to be brought in as an organization culture the edge in hr is not for sale and is not only theoretical as a result of that hr will have to learn one thing themselves is to throw away the policy if it is not meeting the need of the present going future i think this rigidity of policy books giving the answer is no what is your question the culture has to be completely set aside and say now we will be flexible enough to even change policies if it makes sense to business and to people and that is the last part rajesh is that the empathy piece will have to be real during the pandemic we did lot of antakshari and we did lot of asking people how is your cat doing how is your mother in law doing all that was necessary at that point of time 
I think the real empathy will now have to be understood and practiced. Thank you, Rajesh. So beautiful. And I loved your point, Akhil, on boxes will all need to go out, whether they are physical boxes like uh, buildings or the boxes in organizational uh, structures. Everything will change. Uh, Professor Vasanti, uh, can we get uh, your suggestions, please? Professor Vasanti, uh, perhaps you are on mute. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, professor, I'll wait 30 second, uh, 10 seconds more, else I'll go to the next one and come back to you. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to request Vinay to go now. We'll come back to uh, Professor. Uh, Vinay, could you please share your perspectives in three minutes? Vinay? Vinay, can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to request Sunita to go with her perspectives. We'll come back. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Sunita. Yes, we can hear you. Please go. I think, you know, uh, this whole discussion about the future is so pertinent because what we do today is what is impacting the future. and. I think uh, COVID has really shown us that because some of the things that are happening to us today are results of collective actions that we took uh, years back, you know, how we ignored things. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that we really have to change. Perhaps we have to slow down, maybe even have to stop sometimes to see uh, what is it that is happening and how is it that we are impacting uh, people around? I think one of the things that HR could do is um, perhaps, you know, we have to stop looking at just our own organization uh, or my own team and really look at the big picture. Uh, you know, to give you a simple example, when I, you know, management team as an HR, they we are creating what we and you know we should not be doing it. We are not CSR. But can I can I take that stand? Because I know that this is going to be the things in the future. So I'm a really you know HR as in taking care of human beings or can i say you know the kind of uh, the kind of meetings and the way we are intruding into people's uh, lives in the evenings in the weekends is compromising on their immunity and that's not really good uh, or it's something that is really compromising relationships that people have with their uh, loved ones and that's not okay will i say those things or will i you know again go into just looking at smaller things and not bigger things. I think this is one of the things that I would really love to uh, see. Because as we have seen, we are all interconnected, humans to humans, humans to animals, humans to microbes. Uh, we have an impact on them and they have an impact on us. And uh, can we really see, have that perspective now, uh, rather than go back into just you know doing the small things uh, that we have done that has led us to uh, this and i'm not saying you know finger pointing at anybody but just making a reflection as a collective and saying all of us are responsible for where we are and can we make a different future by doing things differently by slowing down yeah that's all i have to say Hello, I'm not sure I'm in right now. But you are, so we are all hearing Rajesh. Maybe you yeah. are Basanti, would you yeah. like to go ahead? Basanti, are you there? 
if i am i am vinay here if i am audible i can go now yeah vinay yeah. you are you are audible please go ahead wait for rajesh to join yeah vinay. thank you thank you uh, rajesh the biggest challenge when the pandemic struck in march 2020 was to how we keep the morale of our large workforce without losing their trust so i had a lot of online chat with all workers assuring that we are ready uh, our medical services are large our two central hospitals are ready with all medicines all pp kits are ready but the point here is you need to democratize innovation you need to involve all your front line workers innovation is not restricted to a, a team member or a particular team you you involve all your front line workers for innovation for example when i was doing this conversation with my uh, all front line workers who are typically minors a uh, very less, less educated you know uh, they are all going undergrounds where social distancing was not possible the two new things came into picture one was ki why not we use a uh, electrical all machineries rather all our heavy machineries which is used for earth removing is all diesel operated he said this way you can reduce pollution and you can you know contribute to the um, uh, reduction of co2 emission so great great suggestion came from front line workers the second was since the demand of coal was reducing in india because of industry was in lockdown and 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 we our stocks was going on going up so the suggestion came why not we are looking for export of coal because geographically we are in the eastern part of india we easily can tap countries like nepal bhutan bangladesh you know for the exports so this two great suggestion came from our our front line workers the point here is you need to create mechanism and spot and skill innovation and collaborate whenever you know mainstream innovation is happening and second thing as a individual level you need to develop hyper skills i was recently reading a hbr article he saying the world belongs to the future world belongs to the worker who has a hyper uh, skills and indra nui calling this is a hip pocket skill if something you know required any contingency requires the management saying this guy is the right guy he is a go to guy who can do the work and the last thing for me is keep learning every part of you know every day of your job because jo sikhega wahi tikega thank you rajesh hello hello am i audible i i was Hello. Yes, Vinay, you were. You were. You were. Are you there, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I just uh, had uh, three points um, on this question. The first one is that we must, for a minute, pause and remember that we've just moved from relief and rehabilitation. to reconstruction of uh, society and uh, all reconstruction has only been done through partnerships collaborations and alliances of all kinds i think it's important that we all remember that it is this collaboration whether it is in vaccine or it is this collaboration in terms of the humanity coming together that has made um, it possible for us to uh, reach where we are today and having this conversation uh the second one that's important for us to remember is that there are several people who are dis in the uh, dis enfranchised excluded and i think the migrant labor we saw the first page of the newspaper i think how do we make a better world uh and not see this again in our lifetime is probably something that all of us in our own little ways have to think about creating the better world technology is here to stay it's a power of good but equally important that technology needs to be managed by humans whether it's mindfulness 
or whether it is collaborating with a robo a collar robo which will be our new reality i think we just need to exercise care and caution in engaging with it last but not the least um learning uh, what we are discovering is a social process and this social process has to be enabled and it is here that the leadership of the future has to actually craft this leaders of the future need to uh, need to create purpose purpose uh, need to be able to sense like what do you did during the period of covid but above all enable people to frame to the new reality and to my mind the organization of the future will indeed be a hybrid organization and it's here that one of you already mentioned what is the better me at as a person as a leader and above all a citizen of the world i think all of those at different levels are important for each one of us and i am deeply reminded of mahatma gandhi who said be the change that you wish to see and i think that's what is needed above everything else yeah thank you rajesh over to you i think there's a problem with rajesh getting in this akhil here so gyan can i request you to share your view sir yeah thank you akhil uh, appreciate uh, that so you know i have uh, the challenge of going last after so many fantastic thoughts and i don't know if i am the last but uh, towards the end uh, and uh, let me spend a minute on just reflecting a few themes that that uh, resonated with me a lot i think the the theme on empathy uh is critical to uh, uh colleagueship to leadership to followership uh and just being empathetic to what's around us the folks uh, that we come in in contact with and those that we don't to just you know what's happening in society uh i love the fact that uh, many of us spoke about being considered and deliberate uh and uh, you know we run around uh, or, or rush a lot trying to do more and more but sometimes slowing down and and really being more considered will hold us in uh, in good stead uh, ahead now in addition to this my own thoughts i think i had one thought at an organizational level and one thought at an individual level which perhaps i can put on the table uh so you know thinking about the future one of my favorite quotes uh, uh, is from this uh, science fiction writer called William Gibson who says the future is already here it's just not evenly distributed and i've seen this you know i, I heard this maybe about 8 uh, or 9 years ago and i've seen it come true so many times that we really don't need to invent anything we just need to be more aware uh, and more inquisitive uh, and curious about what's happening the experiments that are in play because somewhere someone has already invented what we are looking to 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 do or you know the problems that we are looking to solve someone has already solved it so i think uh, uh, two things the first is uh, uh, you know the pandemic has peeled the onion on leadership and uh, what i have observed is uh, in organizations that we come across two types of leaders in the last few months and in the months that are ahead of us we we will clearly identify two types of leaders that we're talking to the first type wants things to go back to how things were before the pandemic you know before digitization sort of enabled us to do things more efficiently so to speak before you know uh, we unlocked the relationship between work and location uh, before we you know sort of uh, uh, flattened the hierarchy and so on, so to speak and democratized uh, work there will be a bunch of leaders that we come across that want things to go back to the old world and these are the ones we should stay steer clear of uh and in fact gravitate towards the leaders that really want to experiment or keep this experimentation going i think that's the first organizational perspective it's the radar that we need uh on on this uh the second at a much more personal level is um, you, you know the sense that we've got to we've got to go within connect with ourselves also many of us don't take the time to connect with ourselves our own spirit which in my eyes is you know the the uh, the new definition of spirituality is just connect your own spirit your own awareness your own consciousness your own story 
Uh, and this is something I've learned from my wife too, that, you know, just being more connected with yourself uh, is, a, is, a, is a fundamental awakening or an opportunity, a great resource, a great uh, oasis of, uh, of calm exists within ourselves. So mindfulness in some ways is, um, is more awareness and is also practicing the art of choice. Uh, and it really is an art. You know, what do we do? What, what do we choose not to do? What do we really spend our time on? That's how we, we create the future for ourselves as individuals and for the organizations we lead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Gyan. I think you brought in a very good point that at the end of the day, during this period, we realized lots of things that earlier we were just simply ignoring. Mindfulness, all this was nice to read about and talk about, but to practice was difficult. So now let me move to question while we're waiting for Rajesh to join in. Uh, this question is from SK Brillian, and it's in the context of the word uh, sweat and blood and uh, words I think used by Anil maybe. And his question is, is in the anticipation of war, are we over preparing and losing the need to live here and now? So, Anil, would you like to take a go at this, sir? Sure, Akil. Uh, I think brilliant, uh, brilliant question. I would say. Uh, yes, so, his name is nice, huh? Brilliant. <laughs> yes, so brilliant has come up with a brilliant question. Uh, uh, brilliant, my uh, when I uh, use this term, I think just use uh, you know, from my army uh, experience or a language where we've used of course we don't mean you know by that but of course it's a competitive world that we live in uh, just to you know say when people we need to we actually have learned in this period uh, to live in the here and now that is one lesson at least i have learned uh, during this period but sometimes if we live so much in you know here and now and we forget about tomorrow uh, so, for example, somebody didn't say for the rainy day and that rainy day arrived. Those people were, you know, whether individuals or organizations, I think were uh, in far deeper trouble as compared to people who thought about it and invested. And when I mean invested, not just from a monetary perspective, but invested in various uh, uh, ways, were the ones who survived and now who are ready to thrive. So that is what I, I meant. So, uh, uh, it is not just about the rat race. It's not about just you know running after something, but having the meaning. But also, so you live in now, here and now. But along with that, be also prepared for a tomorrow which is far more uncertain, far more far more riskier. Thank you, Akil. I hope I've answered. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anil. Very well explained. And this question, next question is from. Um, Ryan Barreto, and uh, very interesting question. What was the easiest decision you had to take during the past 10 months? Easiest decision. So maybe uh, we'll go random. Um, uh, Tanya, what are the two easiest decisions you took besides attending webinars? N number of. Okay. <laughs> so again, I will uh, form an acronym, which is OLE. Uh, I think openness uh, of whatever was happening. Uh, L, letting go of, uh, you know, uh, the the barriers, uh, you know, saying, okay, you know, this is the chain of command or, you know, support, you know, or, um, you know, these kind of times are very, very rare. So, uh, and then last one is embrace, O-L-E. So openness, letting go and embracing whatever it is that was coming, whether it was, you know, probably ensuring just sending out messages, running to the government, the ministry, because we were in a foreign country, or for that matter, speaking to families, speaking to people who were uh, stranded, because you see, these were uh, uh, centers, quarantine centers, which were far uh, away from the city. And also we had people who were in different parts of the quarantine, uh, in a so. So I think it is about those three letters, uh, O-L-E, yes. Uh, and if okay. I can add You're a pretty good at it, so actually you are, you are YG, uh, uh, you are actually YGAA, um, Tanya. <laughs> and YGAA, so you are good at acronyms. 
Vasanthi, would you like to chip in, ma'am? Hello. Yeah, Vasanthi, can you hear me? What are the easiest decisions one has to take? I think. Uh, can you hear me? Example. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, Vasanthi. Okay. Clearly, what are the quick decisions you feel the easiest decision one could take? Yeah, uh, I think the easiest decision that one could uh, one could I could take to take was just to trust that people will work in the interest of the larger organization. Excellent. And that trust Excellent. just uh, crept through the whole team, and uh, I don't see a problem at all. I mean, I haven't been tracking. Obviously, uh, there will be the ups and downs in lives of people, but I think overall the team just rose to the occasion. So trust is relatively easy. Okay, thank you. Very well said, uh, Vasanthi. There's a question. Sorry. Yeah, Akhil, if you can just take a seconds and uh, you know talk about one yep. decision. So in one of the organizations I work with, as the pandemic hit, the leadership took a voluntary decision of taking 50% pay cut. And such decision in any other time would have been so difficult. And that's where I felt. a uh, building a trusted partnership where we trusted uh, you know each other and the board trusted and we trusted board including i as a consultant took a you know for three months i said okay will not pay and i continued to work even much more you know uh, harder and spending more time with the organization and that paid off uh, very very well a tough decision and taken just because i trust yeah. yeah anil that's a very uh, very relevant example lot of people sacrifice without hesitation it came very easy to them because there was a feeling of warmth and camaraderie and empathy for others there's a very interesting question from arvin mittal here and uh, bevesh bhai can i ask you to attempt this sir what is that one thing you were doing as most important in your organization before pandemic and have kept it post pandemic all right uh Uh, yes uh taking risks uh in organization we take risks uh, and the risk uh, is like rubber band it works when you stretch a bit so taking those risks of uh, little overnight journeys uh, uh, uh taking ambitious uh, project deadlines to deliver uh stretching people to uh, go a little beyond uh post pandemic the easiest so that was the one thing we were doing and post pandemic we subordinated our thinking to the government here every 15 days parliament means and they come out with guidelines and we follow it sacrosanct so the easiest yeah so that answers both uh, taking risk and then later on to err on the side of caution thank you dev thank you uh, debida your view on this debida So while the yeah, is coming on, uh, I completely agree. Um, uh, this is Tanya. So, for instance, you know, my colleagues are stranded in Dubai because we have operations in Kuwait. Um, of course, we have an office in UAE. You can't enter the country, so you have to go via GCC countries. So you you get quarantine for seven days, and again, when you get to site, again quarantine for seven days. So, and then there's the ministry, there's visas, uh, all kinds. Of So it's, it's a complicated world. Sorry, Devi, over to you. Okay, Devi. So, um, yeah. So, Akhil, I think um, one of the decisions that um, we closely took with the client uh, company was to um, allow people to operate from anywhere. Earlier, it is a SAP implementation company, and most of the consultants were on the client side. Okay, and there is a lot of discussion and deliberation, negotiation with the clients, and kind of influence and agree with the client to make sure that people can actually deliver from offshore. I think that was a uh, brilliant decision which was taken, which actually uh, changed the way the company was operating. Excellent, Devi. Short and simple. Gyan, any comment on from you, sir, on this? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think for me, uh, if you hear me, I think for me the big um, uh, response would be uh, wellness and uh, mental well-being and physical well-being. Uh, you know, just being more compassionate 
uh, and um, you know focusing on psychological safety so that we can get through difficult times together. These were this such an amazing case study that I think we're going to learn from for years to come. Right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And Vinay, you were in a very different situation being essential services. You carried on. Would you have yeah. to on this? Very different from others. I think uh, the difficult, I, I will answer the opposite. The difficult decision was since our underground mines, uh, people work in a huddle and people work in a group. So social, social distancing was, uh, you know, difficult there. And uh, it was tough decision on our part of the management to continue operation of the underground mines. And ECL essentially uh, a large around 50 numbers of underground mine, around 40,000 people work in underground mines. So I'll answer in a reverse. This was a difficult decision for us to continue with the underground mine. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I would invite the audience to post their questions. Uh, please do um, raise questions because it's all learning for all of us. As you ask questions, all of us learn through the responses from these uh, experienced panelists. In the meantime, there is a, a question from uh, Amita Menon, uh, specifically for Rohit. Uh, what were some policies you had to tweak or change during the pandemic? Um, yeah, so I think there were a few. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Can yeah. Yes, so, yeah. yes, so, yes uh, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Sure, sure. sure. So uh, there were a few elements. I mean, one uh, work from home was something that um, you know in this in this scale, I, I don't think we were ever used to doing. So, and if you know, having a work from home for seven thousand employees, and we are still for the last uh, one year since March uh, March fourth or March fifth, uh, you know, we've been we've been doing that. And the easiest decision, one of the earlier question, the easiest decision was for us to say that if it if anything ever impacted employee safety, let's you know let's not do it. So any, any any policy, any element for people wanting to uh, people wanting people to come to work for something or whatever, we said no uh, is impacting. It's still not safe. We will not do it. So I think that part of working from home for so many so many months was a was a big one that we tweaked. Uh, we shut down in Noida. We we shut down four out of six offices. We sh we, we shut them down. Uh, you know, and uh, of course it had had a lot of savings, but it also meant that it was a it was a it was a, a stake in the ground. To say that, hey, until until the pandemic becomes safer for people to come in, we uh, you know we we can look at reorganizing our offices, you know, relooking at our uh, our real estate, uh, and 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 seeing you know as we come back from the pandemic, you know how do we really you know kind of reorganize ourselves. Thirdly, from a employee engagement standpoint, the virtual the virtual connectedness uh, around employee engagement, um, you know, while we were doing a lot of roundtables, a lot of one-on-ones, um, you know, I, I think we got in an AI an AI based system uh, where uh, where we uh, we've uh, we actually have an AI, AI based bot who now speaks to our employees, engages with them, and really uh, we get more specific data. And uh, and then we have uh, HR business partner connect, which uh, with, the, with, with with the employee concern. And do roundtables versus that as well. That's uh, you know that's again something we've done. Finally, ESOPs. You know our 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 shares for any startup ESOPs are big, and we we took a decision when when the pandemic came over. That, hey, while the cash increases will be uh, you know will be uh, you know a, a certain quantum, we will be increasing the number of ESOPs and, and and the coverage of ESOPs that we give to our employees. So that again was uh, something that we tweaked uh, you know in the pandemic. Thanks. Okay. So while, I just uh, add to what uh, uh, Rohit be, said, any questions? May, I, may I just add to what Rohit said? Actually, what Rohit uh, also didn't mention that you know Rohit was uh, the lead for right. Accenture, and we worked together. So one of the things that you know, work from home is not something which was uh, which was not there. I, a lot of us in Accenture work did work from home for a uh, you know for quite some time. But I think uh, apart from that, I think what really un undertook a change is uh, again uh, uh, CMA. Uh, this, uh, basically, the compensation parameters. Because what happened is, uh, if you if you look at uh, uh, the the met matrices, and, and I actually spoke to a lot of uh, people on uh, the compensation. So uh, some of them did deferred bonuses. Some of them uh, kind of uh, said, you know, we will give you a cut now, and then we will put it back again. Uh, 
uh, whether some went ahead with the promotion uh, which, which which was there. Uh, the other thing which was which changed as a policy is, uh, uh, for instance, uh, people started getting bandwidth allowances. Uh, the ergonomics about the chair um, or, or setting up a workplace at home. So basic parameters of components of compensation changed drastically. That's that's one noticeable change which which came around. The other thing I think while mental wellness was a big thing, but I think this was something which really tested uh, people because uh, people were falling ill. There was uh, loss of loved ones or people in uh, say quarantine centers. So that that human touch was very, very essential. And uh, it was just not lip service, but really feeling for the person and trying to do for the person. And there was also so much of uh, financial okay. loss. So I think a lot of uh, companies also went and tried to help people to get the jobs. Thank you, Tanaya. You didn't end with any acronym this time? I did. CMP. <laughs> uh, no. Compensation parameter. <laughs> okay. policies. So let's move forward. You know, we are all talking about big organizations, multinational, rich, and well-to-do. Uh, I want us to focus, at least few of us, on those pains that the medium sector and manufacturing sector went through. Debbie, would you like to comment upon that, sir? And what is the way to alleviate that now that the pandemic is on the decline? Debbie? Debbie, can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Um, Did you get my question, Debbie? I want you to articulate okay, could you repeat that, for me, that small sector and medium sector and manufacturing went through and how to alleviate yeah, maybe. So, um, look, I think, uh, one, can you hear me? Yes, now we can, but voice is breaking. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, your voice is breaking, okay. but carry on. So, um, okay, okay. So, um, I think uh, the small and medium sectors, and specifically startups, okay. Um, what I saw is that. What comes handy for them is uh, their flexibility and agility. Okay, so actually, in a way, most of the startups I mentor and the uh, mid-sector companies were in IT and in uh, IT technology and learning space. So they had the advantage of uh, the situation, and they actually turned around to change. Um, I mean. Uh, the turn around to get the benefit out of it. So uh, I'm just saying what they are doing now and what we are trying to do now is that um, we want to make sure that we we have the right people. Okay. So basically the focus on the uh, talent and the performers have become extremely important. Okay. Secondly, the uh, considerate usage of resources is becoming extremely important. So basically, uh, in a way, Anil said that um, look before you spend and make sure that you spend in the right uh, direction. Thirdly, create a buffer zone around you. You know that things could always come back. We are today, even we are not too sure whether we are not be uh, whether this COVID uh, COVID uh, virus is not uh, coming back. You know, it, it would come back in a day. So whatever we have, create a buffer okay. around okay. in terms of resources, in terms of new ideas, in terms of alternative options. So I think those are the things. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Akhil, uh, uh, two, I want to intervene about uh, from government sector for MSME, yeah. for medium and small sector. The two policy level changes uh was announced and uh, given to us the government sector one was uh, some concession to them in participating in any tender like any tender any work they want to take from us for any for supply of items they need to give the performance guarantee this performance guarantee which is five percent of the value of uh, the tender was waived off for msme and similarly we have been told by the government to release all the pending payments within one month for this 
to do you to make them liquid you know the liquidity to improve their liquidity so this two thing i thought okay. we should inform the audience about uh, the good. government took uh, this two that's, policy interventions yeah that's a good education as a education for many of us uh, sunita before i hand over to gurmeet uh, uh, would you like to say something sunita Uh, no it's uh, you know i was just i was just thinking that uh, my context is very different i work as a consultant but i also work very much in the social sector so uh, i can see that a lot of discussions right. are about things which are happening inside the organizations but i all i want to say is you know at the same time that we focus a lot inside uh, going back to the point that i made i think we also need to start looking at the whole picture you know the how we are also interconnected and how it's not only about our own organizations uh, and that's that's all you know well just said. an underlying fact thank you so thank you i want to ask the last question and uh, anyone can chip in at least two or three of you can chip in god forbidding and i repeat god forbidding a crisis like this was to happen again what are the preemptive measures you would tell the organization now Anil, would you like to try? God forbid, a crisis like this serious was to happen again. What is the preemptive thing you would do? Advise the organizers. Anil, after that, Bhavesh, by you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me check if Anil. Okay. Okay. Anil, after you. Please go ahead. No. A. A. B follows A. Okay. So <laughs> I. This is I already for beauty. Is it Bhavesh? <laughs> okay uh, thank you bhavesh uh, so i already talked about uh, the same things i would uh, you know repeat uh, here the advice is nothing new you know first and i'm talking more from as you, as you said you know from smaller organizations perspective there many of the organizations who actually went be much beyond their means and uh, without focusing on the core which is uh, getting money from operations not just investors money burning cash uh, because you have easy cash and capital coming in and those are the organizations so that is one from a smaller organization point of view that it's very important that you use learn to use the resources very judiciously second point i would say is the leadership i think the differentiator really has been did we have leaders who can keep calm who can be you know positive in such trying times who are also able to wade through and find their way and not only just find their way uh, but also show way to others uh, leaders who are able to communicate and over communicate during this period rather than go in hiding a leader who are authentic you know they really uh, uh, believed in what they were saying and they did what they said Uh, and they were transparent about even if it is a bad news uh, uh, which people may not want to hear so i think these two things uh, one managing within the means and uh, using your resources judiciously and second i would say build a leadership uh, uh, which really can withstand uh, any such uh, you know crisis comes i again. think the Thank point you. about leadership anil is very well put that we need different <laughs> set of leadership uh, style and skill going future very well said uh bhavesh bhai uh, akil you, akil before you go to the next speaker i have to leave so allow me to take this i have just one sentence to say please go ahead you know here yeah i will say to yeah, my Vinay, you know organization when the next thing we have seen this and we have been through this pandemic before as a team together i am sure the we will see the next pandemic if it comes and with more greater insight and we will give more greater knowledge so let's stick together so no 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 preemptive advice uh, no preemptive advice just hope for the best vinay which is an advice <laughs> thank you for the best yeah oh that's it why okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, let okay, me take this further. You, my first, yeah, my first uh, answer is very quick hack for Rwanda and organization. Uh, if this was to happen again, we need to have cross functionality in place. 
it's like a mission impossible uh, team whereby people can easily take up others roles so uh, the elbow roles and the 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 other roles we need to have cross functionality embedded so continuity of organization is in place and on a little more deeper uh, uh, suggestion i would like to say, so one is operational uh, agility uh, to 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 slay the vampire of agility yeah. second is more deeper more profound and deeper how do we use all this authentic leadership the hindsight wisdom to create a deep enduring engagement where tanaya tanaya sorry i'm using a b c d where above and beyond the call of duty engagement <laughs> comes in so how do we get that enduring discretionary effort come in so how do we get that engagement in place so that uh, god forbid this happens then people rise to board. that's my two cents very nice. thank you uh, there's a comment before i end uh, there's a comment by uh, dr pramod uh, sardar joshi uh, he says that uh, as a strategy forward a good vector based on design thinking would be an aggressive blend of high tech plus high touch i think he summed it very nicely that while we go high tech stuff going forward uh, i don't think we should ever neglect high touch also uh, i apologize on behalf of rajesh uh, he had some serious problem getting back into the uh, net but since we have 5 minutes left i would now invite um, and with the permission of vipul i would now invite uh, guram rita to share her uh, views on the technology and what she does and how it can be uh, so sort of propagated etc so guram rita five minutes to you ma'am yes thank you so much akil good evening all of you i hope i'm audible yes good evening all yes, right yes. thank you thank you so at the onset would like to thank all the speakers our viewers and sponsor partners for coming on board this unique virtual gathering hosted by beyond reality events a turnkey virtual event management service so we have a little story to tell all of you had such amazing insightful stories so we have a little story to tell that how bre came into place so as they say never waste a good crisis and i think we've heard this term a lot last year and in challenging times we must question the accepted reality because things are going wrong rapid answers are needed and the solution may well be found outside the usual compass it's during this crisis you should know always to keep an eye on what will happen after the crisis and this exactly was the thinking premise on which beyond reality events was formed My name is Guramrita Oberoi. I am founder of Just Be. I spent the first ten years of my career working in full-time corporate jobs, post which I decided to take the path of entrepreneurship. It's been over eight interesting years now. Starting off as a freelancer, then I found my life purpose in my enterprise, Just Be. We are a boutique consulting practice providing leadership coaching, corporate training and strategy consulting services to our clients. However, last year the buying behavior of all our clients, which is mostly the corporate L&D functions, shifted dramatically for us. And we realized social distancing is making L&D leaders to search for alternatives and rethink how they can develop and train people to create and strengthen organizational capabilities all this when we cannot come together in one place while there was an elevated interest in virtual training through an increase in webinars and virtual conferences digital fatigue setting in could not be ignored uh we are just being realize that engaging a virtual audience is quite different than presenting in purpose and not only did we need to adapt and upskill ourselves we needed to find a way to fill in the gap in the immersive experiential engagements online so uh as luck would have it and fortunate turn of events they brought me in touch with my friends kanishk and kartik 
and the story now goes to them so i would request kanishk or kartik to take the lead need to go thank you uh, thank you very much gurumrita kanishk uh, Good evening, everyone. I am Kanesh, an IT engineer by education and a traveler by passion. After working with IBM for a few years, uh, I decided to devote my time to my passion, and that's when uh, I switched to organizing jeeps and SUVs off-road events. A few years later, I was in the organizing team of Mahindra Adventure, where we curated <laughs> self-drive expeditions and off-road events throughout India. A couple of years later. A couple of years back, I founded my own organization called Beyond Expeditions, where we try to fulfill people's dream of driving to the remotest parts of the planet. The last international expedition we conducted before the lockdown was in February 2020, just a month before the nationwide lockdown was to Kyrgyzstan. As we all know, the ever-evolving and unprecedented COVID-19 situation. was an extreme challenge for the travel and tourism industry so in the quest for finding ways to bring uh, the world into people's homes i started researching how virtual reality can be used to capture tourism destinations in a unique and immersive way one of the great one of the greatest strengths of vr is allowing the user to experience the feeling of being there while regular images and videos can work well for showing what destinations has to offer they don't often elicit an emotional response vr has the capability to place the user at the heart of the scene and makes it easier for them to imagine themselves at the location just the way you all have come together from different parts of the world and experiencing this villa in florence this research of mine led me to karthik over to him good evening everyone can you hear karthik, me karthik please go ahead yes all right so i'll uh, uh, in the interest of time i'll keep this as short and as sweet as possible i've been working for the last 17 years for uh, uh, you know in the simulation and training industry most of it with a company called cae which trains uh, most of the airline pilots around the world they are the industry leaders about 10000 employees around the world i've been fortunate enough to work in five different countries and uh, my background is in artificial intelligence and virtual reality and the application of these things in simulation and training um, last year i started my own business uh, consulting around these areas and uh, that's how kanish can i connected um i founded this uh, startup called innomagica which is all about the magic of innovation and uh, that's the third of the the partners you see up here uh, covid was a bit of a blessing in disguise we you know we we were as guramrit and kanish have already mentioned uh, it kind of brought us together uh, bringing out the opportunity within the crisis and uh, that's that's what led us to um, you know this great uh, platform that we are in uh, experiencing today so i just want to share a few things about you know what we are able to do and uh, what our capabilities are um, obviously you've experienced a lot of this uh, today uh, we have the ability to create uh, you know recreate virtual environments uh, Uh, we can bring in pictures from your offices or locations that you've been to in the world you know if you, you if you're using used to having your company offsite in paris every year we can bring paris to you in today's world as you can see around in the room uh, everybody has got their virtual avatars um, we've got another feature called specialized audio which uh, you don't experience it here because of the size of the room and the number of uh, uh people today we've turned it off but uh if you would like we can demo that another time we've uh, you know we've got a virtual coffee shop where you can experience some of the great features of our platform and the spatial audio particularly is interesting because it actually solves the problem of uh, digital fatigue you can actually get a sense of where people are in the room compared to uh, where you are standing so for example uh, you know if i'm right now placed a little behind uh, akil and he would be 
able to make out that I'm behind him and uh, when I walk in front of him he would get that sense that we are now having a face to face conversation and there are little things like these which are you know really powerful elements coming from the world of virtual reality into the mainstream uh, right now uh, those of you who are participating today uh, would have noticed that you didn't have to set up anything you didn't have to install anything it's just everything running in a web browser uh, eventually uh, you know the same platform runs across different uh, devices and if you ha had a vr headset for example you know if you are in, into gaming and you uh, had a virtual reality headset like an oculus quest or an htc vive uh, without again installing anything you'd be able to get the same experience but at a completely different level where you can uh, actually get a sense of the 3d surroundings around you so a lot of interesting stuff that's possible uh, and this is just one of our platforms we have uh, a few other possibilities uh, a lot of uh, options for customizing based on your needs and if kanish you could just step over to the side i can change the slide and quickly go through a couple of uh, other key points as you can see i've we are sharing right now a slide uh, uh, which is a presentation and uh, by the way there might be some notifications on the side that you're seeing you can ignore them um the we can bring in slides videos audio 3d objects uh we can bring all sorts of you know interactions here we've uh, done events where uh, we've done activities like treasure hunts and uh, you know a lot of team building activities a lot of team engagement activities uh, trainings uh we can have collaboration here using uh, whiteboards screen sharing a lot of features that you're not seeing today but there are that are possible uh, we can also have our webcams built into this so we can actually see each other's faces live um uh, many different uh, combinations and permutations of these features that can be applied for your events and just to give you a, a very 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 quick uh, sort of visual overview of what that looks like uh, we've got some shots of uh, previous events um i for one yeah, can speak to the one that's closest to my heart which is uh, we did a college reunion of my batch with about 30 people in uh, a big room Uh, screening we collected all the photos uh, of you know our entire batch made a video out of it screen that video did a great reunion um, so you know the possibilities are endless uh, there uh, the platform is there the tools are there i'm sure uh, you know with the current environment there are needs that can be fulfilled and there are other services that are not uh, filling the gap here which is uh, you know caused by the the whole the, this studi world that we've shifted into of a grid of faces our uh, you know biggest endeavor here is to get us back into a world that's more immersive more interactive more experiential and uh, we'd love to show you a bit more if uh, you want to stop by our virtual coffee shop sometime so right thank you so thanks so much uh, and folks if you are still uh, tuned in everyone uh thanks so much for staying right up to the end my apologies i found the outdoors so beautiful i hadn't visited florence <laughs> again i just went shopping uh i just got back <laughs> thankfully i caught the conference uh, towards the end i want to start by thanking you dear audiences both on youtube and all those who are tweeting and connected on other platforms uh i know you all had some fantastic question responses that happened and uh, that's amazing to see i'm going to just capture a few lessons that i got during the design the future there were fantastic uh, thoughts that came during the part 1 part 2 i'm going to share a few words with you just about seven or eight lessons and then we will close the bring this event to a close the first one which came from my uh, friend bhavesh was about uh, detox and uh, speaking about a new kind of celibacy which makes us free from electricity and uh, nets even if it be for a day or a few hours in a month the second was about scaling up implementation collectively as a society and community 
second came from anil how do we feed uh, how do we find and communicate who we really are and take collective uh, knowledge and speed up that implementation uh, suku spoke about adopting technology uh, very quickly and most of all keeping our empathy intact keeping our good selves of our human sides intact uh, taneya spoke about the new caa which was about change adapting and adopting to the new normal rohit focused a lot on leadership and reminded us uh, reminded us once again that eq is much more important than iq which is tested during such times spoke about authenticity devi made a lot of impact with his two mantras of creating social good but also better versions of ourselves akil spoke about looking at organizational policies revisiting them and not at all considering that anything is fixed anymore and a lot more got spoken but i think we should do for designing friends we will send you a, a report uh, which will be circulated capturing all that was learned during uh, the crisis as well as perspectives on what can be done to design the future friends we brought to you a completely new experience when you are on uh, youtube or any other platform you probably hear much more but please remember when we speak about the future we must practice being in the future and we thought to you we will take this uh, our events to a completely new level i want to thank the sponsors before i come to our uh, panelists and my fellow colleagues over here the partners whether it was beyond reality events that made this uh, possible bre i'm uh, sure you heard uh, karthik uh, you know speak about all that's possible for your organizations also our other partners uh, brownie heaven sleepy owl and brew house also a better world which was our uh, print partner so with that i come to the last set of thanks which is to all my uh, panelists colleagues in the house that joined us from so many different places in the world and so many places in india itself starting with uh, sunita tanaya professor vasanti anil akil bhavesh debi gyan rohit suku and vinay also a final word of thanks to raj raghavan who wanted to join in but unfortunately his health did not permit him today i also want to thank all the volunteers who did an amazing job while we were here in the room the volunteers kept youtube rocking and all other social media rocking friends i am not taking all your names but each of you has contributed to the cause of mthr we are an organization completely not for profit non commercial only wanting to make learning possible for hr in different ways all the time with that i bring this to a close me and my colleagues at uh, modern hr co team kyur uh, the youngest and then rajesh gupta rg vipul and myself sign off for now uh, good night all the best and even a good morning if you are on the other side of the globe bye everyone thank you panelists Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank, you, everyone. thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Rajesh, Vipul, great experience. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.